Tonight, DS Automobiles is pleased to sponsor the Diplomacy in Ireland European Diplomat 2021 Diplomacy Awards. It's described as the most difficult diplomatic posting in Europe. The role of the Ambassador of Israel to Ireland is a challenge, even on the best of days. Still, His Excellency Mr. Ophir Karif demonstrated exceptional attributes both personally and as a diplomat in helping the Irish and Israeli people and their respective governments better understand each other. Because of His Excellency's work, both nations have learned to better celebrate their commonalities and appreciate their differences, each committed to building upon the relationship. We are pleased to present Ambassador Karif with the Editor's Award for his use of exemplary diplomatic skills in the fields of bilateral and multilateral relations. I feel very fortunate to have the President of the Jewish Representative Council of Ireland here to receive the Diplomatic Service Medal with Honours that we present to the former Israeli Ambassador to Ireland, Lofir Karif, who is an extraordinary diplomat who discharges duties well Thank you for accepting on his behalf. Thank you. My name is Leonard Abrahamson, and I'm delighted to accept this honor on behalf of Ambassador Career, who is unable to attend in person to do so. The Jewish Representative Council of Ireland, of which I'm president, mainly deals with the religious rights and practices of the Irish Jewish community, as well as acting as the representative body of the community, both among our own members and externally. In the latter regard, we have cordial relations with the Irish President, the Irish Government, members of the Diplomatic Corps, and senior figures in all major religious denominations in Ireland. In addition, we are affiliated with both the European Jewish Congress and the World Jewish Congress and have close relations with these organizations at a high level. As well as working closely with Ambassador Kariv during his tenure in Ireland, we have urged the relevant authorities here to ensure that hate crimes, including anti-Semitism, are legislated against. In addition, we continue to encourage the Irish government and Agada Shekhorna, among others, to fully adopt the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. On behalf of Ambassador Kariv, I would like to thank the Diplomacy in Ireland Awards Committee for recognizing His Excellency's contribution to building greater understanding and cultural ties between Ireland and Israel. Good evening and shalom, ladies and gentlemen. It is a real pleasure to be joining you for this ceremony from Jerusalem. I am truly honored to receive this Diplomatic Service Medal, and I would like to sincerely thank Neil O'Hali and the Diplomacy in Ireland for finding me a deserving, a deserving person for getting this award. It was a great honor for me to serve as Israel's ambassador to Ireland from 2018 until the summer of 2021. And I look back on my time in Ireland with great fondness and satisfaction. There's no doubt that it was a challenging road. And certainly during my mission, I frequently had to stand for my country's interest and good name and fend off attacks by some political and media figures. Nonetheless, my time in Ireland has reaffirmed my belief that there is far more that unites us then divides us, and I made it a priority to forge relations with a wide range of contacts, despite some political differences. Although I expected to face challenges in Ireland, I did not expect in my wildest dreams that I would experience a global pandemic while resident in Dublin. However, this pandemic also created an opportunity for cooperation between Israel and Ireland, as the two countries sought to exchange information and best practices, in particular in the context of our successful vaccination program. This was further proof that our two small advanced economies and democracies have much 
in common and that we can learn from each other to the benefit of all. Following the signing of the historic Abraham Accords between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Morocco, I was delighted to have the opportunity to develop relations with my esteemed colleagues from these countries over the past year. One of my most vivid memories is standing with my dear colleague, Ambassador Sultan El Ali of the United Arab Emirates in the synagogue in Terenur last December to light the Hanukkah candles. Also the warmth of relations and depths of conversations with my friend, Ambassador Lachsan Marawi of Morocco will always dwell in my heart. Such encounters would have been unthinkable even a year prior to that and were clear proof of the opportunities available when neighbors make peace. I was privileged to serve with a very special group of people in the diplomatic corps resident in Ireland, some of them my dear friends. We all had to confront the trauma of the pandemic and isolation from our home countries. As diplomats, most of our work is conducted in face-to-face -face meetings, at receptions and official events where we can have the opportunity to network. Suddenly, overnight, all of that stopped, and we were all forced, in a way, to relearn our jobs. I'm so glad that I was able to experience a few weeks of normality in the summer when the public health restrictions eased just before returning to Israel. There was such a sense of joy when we were able to meet again as colleagues and friends and celebrate national days and other important occasions. I also very much appreciated the excellent relation with my colleagues from the Department of Foreign Affairs and of course with Minister Kovny. Although we may have had political differences, I always appreciated our open and frank conversations, which were conducted in a good and professional atmosphere. In my work, I was always supported by a great team in the embassy, both Irish and Israelis, including my deputy head of mission, Ori Weizmann. Although the work is largely unseen, their contribution to my mission was indispensable. I would also like to pay tribute to my successor, Ambassador Lyon Barsadeh, who is a highly experienced diplomat and who I know will do her utmost to bring Israel and Ireland closer. With all of my dear colleagues, Irish and Israeli friends in mind, I would therefore like to conclude with the words of the great Irish poet W.B. Yeats. Think where men's glory most begins and ends, and say my glory was I had such friends. Thank you for your friendship and your cooperation. If you enjoyed the high-level international panel of experts on our last webinar, Cyber Warfare and Emerging Threats, please join us in January for our next expert webinar on diplomatic issues and cultural artefacts and artistic treasures entitled Stolen, Looted and Disputed with the Art Loss Registrar's world-renowned expert, Julian Radcliffe.